Now, let's get back to this. And so, according to scriptures, verse 4, that he would be buried and he would be raised on the third day, according to scriptures, and that he appeared to, notice all he appeared to, Peter, then the twelve, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers, all at the same time. Most of whom are still living, and yet some of them fall asleep. Then he appeared to James and all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me as one abnormally born. So he appeared to Paul, or Saul at the time. Why is that significant? Because he, Saul was persecuting the Christians. Saul was trying to stamp out this new group of Christians. And so here you have this person who was against Christianity, all of a sudden turns and is a Christian and is now the one who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. It would be similar to Osama bin Laden becoming a Christian. That's the significance of it. And he says, he appeared to all of those. Now look, here I am. I am, the, I am Paul, and I'm following Christ. I am least of those who deserve to know Christ because of what I did, and I am abnormally born. So all of this is coming together to prove that they got the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For he says, verse 9, I am the least of the apostles and don't even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was within me. Whether then, or it was I, or they, this is what we preach, and this is what we believe. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. If they didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, if they were not sure in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I really doubt that the apostles would have stuck together. I really doubt that the apostles would have gone through some of the persecutions that they went through. If you ever read uh, Christian history and you hear some of the persecutions that they went through, you know, Peter being crucified upside down, uh, John being put on patents all by himself, uh, Andrew being crucified, you know, and, and, and all of these apostles except one died abnormal deaths. John died normally, but yet he was a prisoner. And so, and so it is central to our faith. If the apostles didn't believe it, they would not have done that. Also, you look at the big turnaround of the apostle Paul. All of this points to the fact that Jesus is alive. Jesus rose from the dead. Plus, let me give you one more significant one is this. Changed lives. Today. We in this church have experienced tremendous outpouring of God's Spirit in the last couple years. We have seen individuals that God has changed their life and they have a complete turnaround in their life and now they're experiencing the joy of being a Christian. We have experienced it in this church and we have seen it. That is evidence of a Holy Spirit and a Holy Jesus and a Holy God that is still working in individuals to bring them back to a saving knowledge. Christ and save the knowledge of God. Changed life today. We have seen it in the church. So much so that we had to buy a baptism on the church because in one year we were baptizing too many people. Ah, I admit I said that wrong. We can never baptize too many people. But we were baptizing so many people that we had to buy a baptism. If there's ever an evidence God today is changed lives today. And we're experiencing it in this church. It is exciting. So much so that last week we had a salvation of the church. They're not with us today because they have to go to another baptism, but we're going to be having a baptism here probably in the next couple of weeks. Isn't that great? That's what it's all about. Now, Paul comes back and says, here is the centrality and the importance of the resurrection. If we did not have the resurrection, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. If we did not have the resurrection, then let's eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. If 
Because that, that, my friends, is the description of what's happening in the United States today. We are living as if tomorrow we want. Let's enjoy life. Let's enjoy life. Let's go out and let's enjoy life. And all it does is bring us into captivity. The more we enjoy life without Christ, the more unjoyable it is. Oh, we might have that shot in the arm of saying, oh, this is fun. I can enjoy it right now. And I'm going to tell you, it's like I said last week, you know, worship is not the, is not the, uh, the, the, the frosting of a cake. It's part of the cake. You know what, remember that? I said you have worship, which is a cake. And it, but if that's not the cake, it's only part of it, but the, the, the frosting. And if you ever ate frosting, I know we all have done this. We take one of those frosting things and we start eating it. Right? And we keep eating it. Keep eating it. Okay? What happens? <laughs> We're just like this, right? And then what's going to happen? Crash. And that's what I'm saying is without crisis. When we live life as if, let's eat and drink and be married for tomorrow we die. We'll say, okay, I'm going to enjoy life. Okay. But we're going to crash someday. And Alcoholics Anonymous is called hitting rock bottom. So when we hit rock bottom, we know we've got to start looking up. Because we can go nowhere else. And we practice that in this church sometimes. Where we, we see where people are and we go, you know what, we've helped them, helped them, helped them, but guess what? We, all we did is hit them, they got to hit them on the bottom first. And then we're there to help them back up. So Paul says, if there is no resurrection, then, hey, you know what? If there's no resurrection, let's go out today and let's eat, drink, and be merry. Because guess what? Tomorrow you're going to die. Right? Let's just have fun with life. Even though we're going to crash, because tomorrow we die. So, now, verse 33. But do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you want. Stop sinning. So Paul is saying, come back to your senses. Life is worth more than that. Okay? He's saying the resurrection did happen. So don't live your life as if it didn't. Because if, don't live your life as if eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. He says, get around good character. Come to your senses. Stop sinning. Why? Because God has in store for some, you something greater than this eat, drink, and be married for tomorrow we die. But there are some of you who are ignorant of God. And I say this to you, shame. If you don't believe in the resurrection, you call yourself a Christian. Shame. Then what does he say? Then he goes on and says that the body is resurrected. Now go for well. Verse 15. First Corinthians 15. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the inheritance. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We all, we will not all sleep, but we will be changed in, the, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. I, I, I listen to these songs. And you hear this trumpet in the background. And I, I'm waiting for one song that talks about the second coming of Christ. And instead of having that, we hear this, you know, this trumpet blaring. I, I want to hear it someday because that reminds me that Christ is coming when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ will be raised to imperishable and we will all be changed. Where the perishable must clothe itself in it It's all of us older people. And I say that about myself because I'm getting old too. Okay? And I'm noticing that as I'm getting older, my body hurts. Okay? I spent a week on the roof of my house and I was uh, I was shingling my house. And you, you're carrying those shingles, you know, 500 pounds on a time. And, and I got done, and I noticed that I could get off off the roof, and I could do about 50 steps, right, while you're standing up. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, I'm at that point right now. Now, notice what it says here. The perishable will be changed to imperishable, meaning my degeneration that's happening in my back in my old age is going to be gone. No longer. Will we be dealing with this anymore? No longer will there be any pain. No longer will there be uh, the perishable. No longer will we 
mourn because of loss of a loved one. Perishable change to new perishable. In the flash and the twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet for the dead and the comfortable sound that the dead will raise is perishable and we will be changed. Or the perishable must clothe itself in the imperishable and the mortal immortality. And when the perishable is clothed with immor imperishable, if the perishable is clothed with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that will be written is true. Death will be swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your saying? And I, I think about that when Paul wrote that. I bet you he was doing the jig. I think about that every time. You know, doing the jig. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sink? So because of the resurrection, we can live this way. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he's given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we don't have Christ, if we don't uh, know that there's a resurrection, we eat, drink, and be married for tomorrow, we die. But because there is a resurrection, we hold on to the fact where we can look at death, and every time there's, we go to the cemetery or whatnot, we can say, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he has given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You say, but pastor, what are you saying? Because you say, go to a cemetery and sing that jig on the graves? In some respects, yeah. For the day will come when the twinkling of the eye, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall arise in the first. Why? Because of the resurrection. Because Jesus died first for us, and then he rose from the grave, and he's given us the hope that we know that the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of our own selves, and those who know Jesus, will happen. No longer do we have to live our lives as if tomorrow we die, let us eat, drink, and be married. But now we can live life as if we can stand on the tombstones and stand on the graves doing the jig. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sin? That is the importance of the resurrection. When people try to dismiss it, they will do all they can to dismiss it, but the truth is still true. Jesus rose from the grave. We can do all we can to try to disprove it, but all the evidence is there that Jesus rose from the grave. We can live life as if eat, drink, and tomorrow, for tomorrow we eat, drink, and be married, for tomorrow we die. But the truth is very simple. Jesus rose from the dead. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Jesus died. He didn't stay in the tomb. Jesus rose. Arise. And the stone was rolled away. And the angel sat on the stone that was before the tomb. And then the Roman guards were so scared that they fell on their faces. And the women came to the tomb. And the, and the, and the angel said, the one you are looking for is no longer here. And they, and they ran back to, they ran back to tell the disciples and there they met Jesus, and it says, and they fell on their faces, and they worshipped him. My friends, we worship him because of the resurrection and the proof of the proof. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and we give you thanks for the fact that you are God. And we praise you for that. And we praise you for the fact that you have given us hope. Resurrection. Jesus name.